Was there anyone who tried to warn us about something that happened but we didn't listen? Who? Turkish Airlines Flight 981 would never have happened if McDonnell Douglas and Convair had heeded. Dan Applegate's warning about the cargo doors coming open during flight. He wrote a memo after the non-fatal American Airlines Flight 96 advising that the doors had design flaws which would cause them to show as properly latched even when they weren't. If nothing were done, he said it would lead to catastrophic failure that would likely result in the loss of the plane. However, the fixes would be expensive and no one agreed who would eat the cost. So proper upgrades were put off. Instead, they tried implementing cheaper band-aid solutions that would ultimately prove ineffective. Harry Marco Polos notified the SEC three times that whatever Bernie Madoff was doing wasn't legit and should be investigated, and all three times he was ignored. He talks about it in his book No One Would Listen. Check it out if you want to see a real facepalm example of government incompetence. French General Ferdinand Folk reportedly called the Treaty of Versailles, 20-year armistice i.e. not conducive to lasting peace. World War II broke out approximately 20 years later. Roger Boisjoli, engineer involved with the space shuttle program who warned his superiors for months prior to the Challenger disaster that launching in cold weather could cause the Oarings to fail. Care to guess what caused the Challenger disaster? Ignaz Semmelweis often described as the father of handwashing. In the 1800s he discovered that infant maternal mortality could be drastically reduced by doctors washing their hands between patients. He was largely ignored and his book got absolutely slated. This is supposed to have contributed to him having a mental breakdown and he died in a psychiatric hospital. 12 TRW engineers resigned their positions the morning of the Challenger incident in protest against risking the flight. NASA launched anyway. Should have listened. In 2005, Courtney Love was asked what advice she'd give young, up-and-coming actresses. She said, if Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party at his Four Seasons hotel room, don't go. And for whatever reason, you didn't see her in many movies after that. Pearl Jam warned us about Ticketmaster years ago. Nobody listened. Now we're stuck with them. And only them. Bismarck warned the ruling German monarch of his time that Germany's status in Europe and the relative peace of the continent would last for only a short time. After his forced resignation, Bismarck said, Jenna came 20 years after the death of Frederick the Great. The crash will come 20 years after my departure if things go on like this. 20 years later, Germany loses World War I and almost collapses. Rick Rescorla, director of corporate security for Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, published a report in 1990 detailing the vulnerability of the World Trade Center parking garage. He and a colleague found they were able to freely walk into the garage, which contained many structural support columns, unchallenged by any security. Additionally no ID checks or screening was done on any of the entering delivery vehicles. Three years later a truck bomb was driven into the garage and detonated in an attempt to damage the building's structure. Later he and his same college would correctly predict the next attack on the building would come. From the air, the evacuation plan and drills he put in place are credited with saving over 2,600 lives on September 11th. Harry Markopoulos. He figured out what Madoff was up to. And the SEC still blew him off for years. Presumably because the proof he was presenting required math to understand. Every single junior officer working in Afghanistan for the last 20 years who universally called the Anna a worthless POS army and their government a hollow, dead money pit. 
Nikola Tesla there was a book he wrote, a pamphlet really, called The Problem of Increasing Human Energy where he talked about slowing down the process of burning carbon until we understood it better. John O'Neill, he worked in the FBI as an anti-terrorist officer. After the car bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993, he remained convinced that Al-Qaeda would try to finish the job. The FBI convinced itself that it was over. And O'Neill, who kept at the investigation, was passed over for promotions to the point he wound up quitting the FBI. They thought he was too obsessed with it. He took a job managing security at the WTC and lost his life on September 11. Great doko about him and the security failures he wanted to prevent here. Frontline. The man who knew. President George Washington. In his address when leaving office. He warned against the danger of a two-party system in future politics. He felt that several parties on equal footing would be better. Especially in presidential elections. The more legitimate choices. The better. While not to the degree that it ended up being but Eddie Murphy took a shot at Bill Cosby's holier-than-thou attitude in his comedy special Raw in 1987 during the height of The Cosby Show. I have a foreboding of an America in my children's or grandchildren's time when the United States is a service and information economy, when nearly all the manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries. When awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few. And no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues. When the people have lost the ability to set their own agendas or knowledgeably question those in. Authority. When. Clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes. Our critical faculties in decline. Unable to distinguish between what feels good and what's true. We slide almost without noticing, back into superstition and darkness. The dumbing down of America is most evident in the slow decay of substantive content in the enormously influential media, the 30-second soundbites, now down to 10 seconds or less, lowest common denominator programming, credulous presentations on pseudoscience and superstition, but especially a kind of celebration of ignorance. Carl Sagan. Edit Colleen. Rowley warned her FBI superiors in June 1st that names on their jihadi watch list were taking flying lessons but not interested in learning how to land. Her report didn't get read until October. Jason Salemi. Epidemiologist at USF. No one knows him. That's cool. I was working on medical ML research glioblastoma at the time, and was asked to help analyze some data about a new virus in China. In the middle of January we had a research meeting, and Dr. Michael said, I don't like this one. I have a bad feeling about SARSNCOV, as it was then called. On February 2020 I was put full-time on the SARSCOV2 team. The rest is history. People thought he was being alarmist. We had recently been through a pair of Ebola outbreaks in Africa. Couple of bad flu seasons. Etc. People thought it would blow over. Seth MacFarlane has made fun of sleazy people in Hollywood for years before the Me Too movement. Help I just escaped Kevin Spacey's house, says Stewie running naked through a crowd of people. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.